Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Maximus. This is video seven, and today we're talking about yet another display, and this one is going to be the heat map, which you should probably be familiar with. So let's load up a default patch here, and then let's select this little circle next to the speed where we were at in the last video, toggle this on, and let's play some signal. So we see the waveforms going, the histogram, what we talked about in the last video. However, let's go to this drop down menu here, and let's disable this for now, and let's go to the heat map and enable it. Now this should probably bring you back memories if you're a long FL Studio user because this is what the EQ over here used to look like before they got the nice fancy update. So with that being said, if we go to this drop down menu here, we go to enhance frequency, it's gonna look a little bit better, almost very similar to how the new update looks. So if we go back to our EQ, it's basically showing us the same thing, but in this window here. And what this corresponds to, the bands are gonna be where the signal is in the frequency spectrum. So over here is 20, 50, 100, 200, 500, 1K, 2K, 5K, and 10K. And the brightness is going to correspond to the loudness of the signal. So something that's a little more like darker purple kind of faded away is going to be much quieter than something that's bright pink right in your face. So that's the way to read this if you were from any for any reason unsure about that. And then beyond that, we have high precision here, which is going to give you more high precision. So while we're talking about this, let me bring down this uh, volume here. There's something that I think is worth mentioning. So sometimes you might have heard this as well, where you've heard a thing say, don't use your or don't rely on your eyes to mix or to master something, use your ears. And to a very extent, that is true. However, I do want to add, though, we shouldn't sacrifice visual feedback and visual tools just to focus on our ears because there's times and and i think we're all guilty of this where we're so focused on a certain thing in our mix or maybe a certain thing in our master that we can kind of overlook different kind of things so maybe you're, you're focused on dialing in your low end in your in this in maximus in your low end band or something like that you might overlook that something's happening on the very top end that there might be some distortion that unwanted distortion that you don't want there and you might not even think about it because you're so focused on the low end and then you look at a graph and you, and you can actually see it and you're like, whoa, wait a second, I didn't even notice that. Because there's times where we're so focused in on, on a certain thing, you know, like what's happened before is like, let's say you're automating a vocal and you're so into it, making sure the levels are right, making sure you're not, you're not going over, you're not going under, and you're really deep into the session and you might not even realize that the snare is muted. That sounds crazy, but that actually happens sometimes. And that's happened to me personally. I'm like, oh my God, the snare has been muted the whole time. That's crazy because I was so focused on the vocal because that was the most important part of the time. So that's something to keep in mind. Our visual stuff should be more so complementary to our ears. So at the end of the day, the ears are the final boss and our eyes are kind of helping your ears navigate. So with that being said, if our ears are the final boss, once we're done with a master, we shouldn't just call it done. We need to print that mix and we need to take it into different rooms and we need to take it into different speakers. We need to have different people listen to us. And there's a very interesting psychological thing that I've noticed personally is, let's say you print a master and you say it sounds good. And then you listen to it on a different set of speakers, maybe some big speakers and you listen to it there and it sounds good. The next thing you should do is to bring somebody else with you and don't tell them about the mix or what you did to it or how cool that saturation is at 6K. They don't care. Just have them listen to it with you and stand next to them. You're gonna notice that you, things are gonna pop out to you because they're, they're listening. You're gonna pick up on more things. So it's almost a certain way where you're kind of hyper aware of the master that you have done. So that's kind of a cool thing in the sense that it'll make your mixes and your masters better. And even if it's someone who's not necessarily an audio guy or a mixer or anything like that, sometimes those people can give you a little bit better feedback. They're just regular lovers of music because they don't necessarily understand the concepts of it too much, which is going to help you. They might say, oh, this sounds too harsh or I don't know, it doesn't sound right. It sounds like this. And through their interpretation, they're giving you an honest opinion and then you know the technical aspect of it and you can make those changes. So I thought I'd mention that because this is this is kind of coming to the end of the visual side of the instructional course of this of this whole series so when we when we hear rely on our ears yes that's very true because at the end of the day this is sound and we listen to sound through our ears not our eyes but our eyes can also help us or help our ears interpret what's going on so yeah so moving forward from there the last menu here is going to be the heat the heat map position and we have top bottom and full and if we click these different buttons here we notice that nothing is changing and it's not broken it's it's working as intended however we also have to have the histogram enabled what we talked about in the last video so here as we can see in the heat map position it's going to be on top 
So this is a cool way to see the actual histogram with the heat map on top of it and our bands, split bands behind that. So what we're seeing here is actually a lot of information. We're seeing our entire waveform of our histogram. We're seeing the frequency bands over here that are split, the low, the mid, and the high, in addition to the traditional EQ view with these vertical bars right here showing us loudness and all that like that. And you can see once these peaks go higher, this is going to go brighter. So we can kind of see how that corresponds together. And in conjunction, we can also see the signal coming into this mid band right here. So this view right here is actually quite a lot. And then we can even toggle on more views right here. So it can be overwhelming for what we're looking at. But as long as we know everything of what we're looking at, it can be very helpful. And we can know what to turn on and turn off and what and what to do from there. And the last couple options here for the heat map, we have the bottom, which is actually kind of cool how it kind of keeps it within the line. I thought that's a very uh, astute little update or feature that FL added. Bravo, because that's a very cool thing, I think. And then the last one is going to be full. So it's kind of like the, the histogram is going to be overlaid through the heat map. So personally, I really liked that uh, bottom right here because it's kind of in the thing. I think it's kind of cool. Slightly distracting, but you know, I think it's it looks cool. Maybe top might be a little bit more effective in the long run, a little bit more useful, I think, in that sense. So that about wraps up this video for our visual stuff. We're going to be further diving into this menu here. So these top ones over here and the monitor input, which is actually we can just talk about this now because it's not really you know what? I'm going to save that for the next video because I have an idea to show this off a little bit better. So yes, we're going to wait for the next video for that one and as well as the other stuff over here because there's some cool stuff that these menus can do it's uh it's a few options here but they are a little bit deeper diving than they might look so yeah thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video